For this episode, I recommend you use headphones, as I'll be playing many music samples. Nintendo used a Ricoh CPU for the NES, a 2A03 for NTSC regions, and a 2A07 for PAL regions. The Ricoh had a built-in programmable sound generator, which produced that signature NES sound. The sound generator was capable of outputting the following channels. Two pulse wave channels, which could be used for melodies. One triangle channel, mostly used for bass. One noise channel, primarily used for drum beats or other percussion. And a DPCM channel that was capable of playing digital samples. But because of how much ROM space a digital sample consumed, and ROM space being expensive, the DPCM channel was seldom used. Combining all of these channels, the onboard programmable sound generator produced that wonderful NES sound we're all so familiar with. Japanese exclusive Famicom Disk System used a Ricoh RP2C33 CPU, which added one additional expansion sound channel. It used wavetable synthesis to provide a slightly richer sound to a select few games. However, by 1988, the Ricoh's limitations were beginning to show, and some developers began engineering special chips that would allow enhanced sound generation. The beauty of this method was that no additional NES hardware was required, as the special chips would be built directly into the game packs. Here are the most noteworthy enhancement chips. The Namco 163, developed by Namco in 1988, was amongst the first of these expansion chips. The additional 128 bytes of internal RAM allowed for up to 8 wavetable synthesis channels, which was a big jump from the Famicom's single wavetable synthesis channel. The Namco 163 added this almost ethereal sound quality to the music.
The Virtual ROM Controller 6, more commonly known as the VRC6, was developed by Konami in 1989 and was used as a memory mapper and an audio enhancement chip. The VRC6 added two additional pulse waves and one single sawtooth wave channel. Sadly, only three games ever made use out of this chip, the most notable being Akuma Jo Densetsu for the Famicom. Here is a comparison to the western port of the game, more commonly known as Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse, which sadly didn't use the VRC6's sound enhancement capabilities. I must warn you, this may potentially ruin your future enjoyment of Castlevania 3, as Akuma Jo Densetsu sounds a million times better. The 5B, developed by Sunsoft, was released in 1991. It added three additional square wave channels, each with a shared envelope and noise generator. Despite the impressive specifications of the Sunsoft 5B, only one game used this chip, the extremely rare and now very expensive gimmick on the Famicom. And finally, the Virtual ROM Controller 7, or VRC7, developed by Konami and released in 1991. The VRC7 had a lot of potential, but sadly it came out so late 
during the NES's life cycle that only two games ever used it, and only one of those two games made use of the audio functionality in the VRC7. This chip added a whopping six channels of two operator FM synthesis audio. When I first heard the sound produced by this chip, I had to double take, because I honestly thought I was listening to an early Sega Mega Drive game. Here's a sample from Lagrange Point for the Famicom. Before I play the sample, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing.